الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My brothers and sisters sometimes people are imprisoned wrongly Sometimes the law is guilty of finding the innocent guilty and jails them. But because there was evidence in that regard, or whatever it may have been, in some places it could have even been corruption. Not everyone in prison is guilty of a crime. Remember this. Perhaps the majority might be, or a large number may be, but there will be innocent people there. Even those who are in the prisons, at times we tend to forget that the idea is to correct them, to be able to come out and reintegrate into society and community in a more constructive way. That's the reason why we imprison people who are criminals. So my brothers and sisters, if you were to look at the story of the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, he actually prayed to be imprisoned wrongly rather than be forced to transgress against Allah. On one hand, he could have just committed the act of immorality and come out free. That might have led one after the other to whatever it may have led. It didn't happen, so we don't know. But he chose to ask Allah, Oh Allah, I'd love to be jailed rather than to go against you. Look at that. So Allah decided subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him the prayer. He was jailed. He was falsely accused. He was found guilty of a crime he never committed. That's why I started the way I did. And he was jailed, but he was so content. He sees the opportunity of him being in prison, doing things that were so constructive. If you are incarcerated or if you know of someone who is there, remember my brothers and sisters, use the time wisely. You know what? Praise Allah. Get closer to Allah, perhaps educate yourself, speak to the others, talk about something. If you're alone, at least praise Allah, get closer to Allah, do something constructive. Your time cannot be wasted. And as for depression and sadness, there is no room for it in that particular uh, circumstance because if you were to think about how long I'm going to be jailed for and you know what, I was so innocent and this, uh, the law has found me guilty of something I haven't even done. And if you keep on thinking on those lines, perhaps you may lose your contentment. But if you know, I believe in the Almighty, I've done nothing wrong and I'm sitting here and really, I know the Almighty has a plan for me. And you live up to the last day, either you will be released or you may die. The death, obviously, people don't want to talk about it, but it may happen. You know, rather die with contentment in a happy mode than to die sad and full of stress and full of, you know, that anxiety. May Allah protect us from stress and anxiety. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to make a dua. Oh Allah, protect me from anxiety, protect me from stress and hardship and so on. So many duas. We spoke about supplications from revelation last year. But my brothers and sisters, what we need to know is when you're in a difficult position, make the most of it. Learn from the story of the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. He was content in the prison. He spoke to his mates about Allah. He addressed them on many issues. He served them. He proved to them that he was a very great person. And, and he reminded them time and again of what was right. You can use your time in a good way. Allah knows why He put you there. He may have wanted you to be in certain company. He might have wanted you to learn a lesson. And if you were or if you are guilty and you did deserve some form of a punishment, then my brothers and sisters, it's not the end of the world. Change your life, change your thinking, correct yourself, become a person who promises that they will not repeat whatever they have done in order to get there. When you come out, inshallah, we'd love to see you reintegrated in society such that you can contribute positively to the communities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that beautiful example in Surah Yusuf of the time when he was put into prison. Similarly, when it comes to his father Yaqub, Yaqub alayhi salam, he lost his son and he lost another son and he was crying and he lost his eyesight and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing him and he is complaining to Allah and he is so content with his tears, 
When you cry, it doesn't mean you're not content. Those who've lost loved ones and they cry. Those who've suffered a loss and they cry. Crying does not necessarily depict lack of contentment. I could be very content and I'm still crying because I'm sad at the loss of a person I loved. May Allah make it easy for all those who've lost loved ones. You can cry. The tears that roll down are tears of mercy. But your contentment is intact. Intact. Look at Yusuf alayhi salam. He kept crying. But he kept saying, أَعْلَمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ O oh my sons, I know from Allah that which you don't know. I know the mercy of Allah, the promise of Allah. I know all of this. I'm not going to lose hope in the mercy of Allah. He even says, لَا تَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُوا مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ He says, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. For indeed, none loses hope in the mercy of Allah except those who don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he never lost hope. He cried, but he did not lose hope until a day came when he was right. Allah blessed him. Allah returned him, reunited him with his son. Those of you who might be separated from your loved ones, be content. Yes, you may be sad. You may be upset. You might be searching. You might be working towards being reunited with your child or with your loved one. But you need to know Allah has a plan for you. Allah knows why it's happening. You don't know. And at the end of the day, even if you're not united in your lifetime, Allah will unite you after this life. Later on, you keep doing good and keep hoping in Allah and Allah will bring you together. Allah knows the reward He's kept for you. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, that's a lovely lesson we learn of contentment from the reaction of the Prophet Jacob, Yusuf, Yaqub alayhi salam, when it comes to his son um, Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam and the other son Binyamin. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of them. One more lesson I'd like to draw from Surah Yusuf before we move on is when Yusuf alayhi salam was ultimately faced with his brothers and they were exposed. Their plots and plans were exposed. So all the planning of the downfall of a person only resulted in his elevation. Be content. Allah grants you goodness. When people plan your downfall, they falsely accuse you, they spread rumor about you, they want the world to think that you're a bad person, they try to tarnish your image. It is through the very actions that Allah will grant you success above them in this world and the next, or at least in the next. In the case of Yusuf alayhi salam, it was in both. Allah elevated his status as a direct result of the actions of his own brothers who wanted to drop him below them. And Allah, ro Allah caused him to rise above them. So this is why right at the end, he was so happy, so content. He looks at his brothers and he says, هَلْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَا فَعَلْتُمْ بِيُوسُفَ وَأَخِيهِ إِذْ أَنْتُمْ جَاهِلُونَ Do you know what you did to Joseph and his brother when you were ignorant? They were shocked. Who knows about what we did? أَإِنَّكَ لَأَنْتَ يُوسُفَ Is it that you are Yusuf? He says, أَنَا يُوسُفُ وَهَذَا أَخِي قَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِ وَيَصْبِرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ He says, I am Yusuf and this is my brother. Allah has favoured us. Imagine he forgot everything that happened over four decades and he says, Allah has favored us for indeed anyone who has taqwa and patience. Allah will never waste their deeds, never waste the deeds of the good doers. If you've done good, Allah will definitely recompense you. What a lesson we have for ourselves. He says, I don't mind 40 years I struggled. I don't mind. I know that when you have taqwa, you develop your relationship with Allah and you have ihsan, which means you are good to the rest of the creatures of Allah. You do good. Taqwa and kindness, Allah will never ever let you down. You want contentment? Develop those two. Taqwa and kindness, be kind. Some of us have one, 
Some people are very kind, but they don't have the consciousness of Allah. And some people are very conscious of Allah in their ibadah, but they're not kind at all. They are rough with their own family members. They are very hurtful, very abusive, no understanding, no communication, nothing. Be careful. This was a lesson. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says immediately after that, they told him, Tallahi laqad aatharaka Allahu alayna wa in kunna la khati'een. Indeed, Allah has favored you above us and we were wrong. Allah has raised you above us. They were planning for 40 years to drop him below them. 40 years later, it emerged. Had they not done what they did, he wouldn't have been so high above them. Why should he be angry? Why should anyone be upset? Wasn't that the brilliant plan of Allah to get this young child into such a powerful position? Had it not been for their actions, he wouldn't have been there. So Allah planned it so carefully. Remember that, my brothers and sisters. And in the end, he says, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم وهو أرحم الراحمين no retribution at all against you guys today. Allah will forgive you for he is indeed most forgiving, most merciful. What a great lesson in contentment. Yusuf alayhi salam, had he not been content, he would not have been able to forgive. Because of how content he was, how happy he was, how reassured he was regarding the brilliant plan of Allah that had in it 40 years of separation from loved ones, he was ready to forgive. He told them before they asked him, they had not yet said, forgive us. They just said, we were wrong. He says, hang on, I forgive you. Subhanallah. My own brothers. He says, you are my brothers. I forgive you. Go to the father. Let's change the topic. Go and bring your father. He didn't even want to address the matter deeply. Imagine what type of contentment you will achieve by releasing, by forgiving, starting with your own family members. Believe me, Allah will grant you a contentment never tasted by you before. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب